I'm Robin Amler of IBS Intelligence. You're listening to the IBS iViews podcast. I'm joined today by Paul Nilsson, Commercial Director of Codebase Technologies, and by Nikhil Gokhale, Head of Research at IBS Intelligence. We're talking about omnichannel in Africa. What's the state of play, Paul? Let's set the scene first of all. How's the adoption of omnichannel solutions coming in Africa? I think omnichannel is not understood the same way across various countries on the continent. Omnichannel in its initial stages a couple of years was very much around the marketing aspect of having a single customer journey, which is, of course, marketing 101. Wherever your customer engages with you, you want them to have the same type of journey. It mustn't be different fragmented systems. It's now evolved together with our open banking type of discussions and people moving into mobile applications that want to grow it more into a type of super app, where they're now starting to step out of that normal customer journey box and saying, well, wherever the customer engages with me, they must be able to engage with all of my touch points in one single area, providing that omni-channel experience where they don't have to hop between applications. So I think different countries are in different phases of that. Some countries are really trying to boost it, especially where there are a lot of st- still a lot of defragmented systems. But I think overall, the African continent is definitely talking about moving more rapidly towards a single point of entry for a customer to have all those touch points available. Well, you've already touched on a couple of things that I guess you'd say again, if I ask this next question directly to you, what are the challenges people are facing? I think the challenges a lot come to pure understanding of what the omnichannel experience should actually look like. A lot of countries that I've been to and been speaking to a lot of senior bank people, the understanding of how to get there is slightly different. But I think the biggest challenge for them is that first step. They don't understand how to take that first step, where to take that first step, because moving into an omni-channel experience is not a product that you buy. It's not something you can get off the shelf. The challenge is to actually bite the bullet and take that first step into an approach. Start somewhere and then automatically start growing around that, which will you know bring all the bits and pieces together. So I think the biggest challenge is maybe... A a bit of knowledge, but the fear of taking that first step because they don't know where they should take that first step or which direction to take it in. But actually taking it is the one. Let's look at the why of taking it. This is, although you said it's more than customer service, Paul, it is about customer service. Nikhil, what's the impact of Omnichannel on customer service? You know, customers today, they are uh, being impacted their expectations from what banking should offer is being impacted by their experiences across different industries, be it retail, be it e-commerce, be it healthcare, uh, be it gaming that they have. So the expectation uh, that uh, customers today have from banking is at that level, that kind of sets the bar, right? And banks are very quickly now realizing that they are no longer a product company. They are not someone who will have a bank account and you know, give out a loan. It's about a service company. You know, when you talk about a service company, that's a mind shift, that's a mental shift that banks have to do. And I think that's the fundamental problem that a lot of banks have been facing. I think, you know, currently across the globe, we're seeing that shift happening very rapidly, especially after the post-COVID world. That shift is happening, the mental shift is happening. And Banks have started realizing that they are in the service industry and that's where they have to ensure that the customers really have a great experience on the channels. And omni-channel, of course, as Paul said, you know, it's the fundamental thing. You know, if, For example, if you, if you have a customer uh, doing customer onboarding from a mobile app and for some reason the mobile app doesn't work and, and the person has to visit a branch, doesn't mean that the person has to start all over again. Maybe the 90% of the work is already done and is doing the last 10% that they have to do. So the, all the channels have to work in unison. Of course, you also have to keep in mind that there's a big human element to customer service as well. So 
omnichannel also impacts the marketing people and how they can actually go and service customers, especially either they are at, at the branches or when they are having digital interactions, right? So, you know, omnichannel is the, the way to go uh, when it comes to boosting customer service impacts. One of the things, however, that makes Africa unique, I guess, is still maybe a limited infrastructure on the part of some of the banks, but that's offset by mobile penetration. Are we committed, therefore, in the continent to a digital first solution, Paul? Yes, absolutely. I, I think the rate at which the mobile penetration is growing year on year, we definitely are in a place where we can have a digital first approach. The African digital approach is still with the USSD where the smartphones haven't penetrated that much, but USSD is actually just the first step. The menu driven USSD channel is just the first step into a smartphone. You can still have the flow of that messaging in a same customer experience that they would when they progress into a mobile application. So just the flow of the USSD messaging format when they eventually transition into the mobile application on a smartphone, it's the same type of customer journey and it's not something new or fresh. So even though some countries uh, where the mobile penetration hasn't been that great on the smartphone side of things, specifically for onboarding, onboarding can be done on USSD. There are various aspects that we're looking at now to have a hybrid model, but that is the way to start. Digital onboarding is the first step in financial inclusion. It's the first step in, in getting everybody on board. So definitely, I think Africa is more than ready from a digital perspective. And it's, like I said, it's just about taking that first step and not being worried about it. Okay, so let's look under the bonnet now at the, what the banks themselves are doing and how they're doing it. Specifically, I'm thinking, Nikhil, about the benefits oh. of opting for a software as a service model in Omnichannel. It's a really good point, Robin. I think, you know, the speed to market is such an important thing uh, in today's world. You know. Today, you know, you could be looking at uh, mobile, but even within mobile, customers spending more and more time maybe on WhatsApp, maybe on, on, on applications like uh, TikTok or, or Instagram. And, you know, those themselves become places where you, you buy stuff. Those become, they're becoming marketplaces, right? So banks have to kind of follow uh, the customer wherever they go. And, you know, if you have a model where you are doing everything on your own, it becomes tremendously difficult and time consuming for you to roll out those type of products in the right time. And that's where the SaaS model comes in. Uh, the software and service model can actually help banks get to the market faster. They will have modules that, that already predefined modules and banks can pick and choose what module suits them best. And you know, they can reach the market maybe in, in 30 days instead of waiting for six months. That's the huge benefit of SaaS. The other benefit, I think, sometimes you know, not, you know, not something that is adequately looked at is the data analytics side. So even when you are uh, looking at the channel experience, under the hood, as you, as you mentioned earlier, is about the data layer and making sure that you have a digital data layer and the alternative data that is now starting to have a, such a major impact on decision making at banks, that layer can also be utilized through the SaaS model. So it's not just the actual product offerings, but it's also the data layer, the analytics layer, where the SaaS model can be utilized and you can go to the market a lot faster. Well, we have a technologist here, Codebase Technologies. Paul, what are you actually up to in the SaaS market area? I agree with Nikhil. It's the way to go. Codebase Technologies actually invested a lot on the continent. We're deploying SaaS in-country. Obviously, there's a lot of data sovereignty issues when it comes to specifically core banking, you know, customer and transactional data, where it's stored. So we're actually bringing these SaaS models in-country. Where there's cloud available, we put it on cloud. Where there's no cloud available, we actually partner up with a infrastructure company and deploy it in a locally hosted data center to provide true economies of scale to the financial institutions. But we've actually come up with some very interesting and dynamic solutions for the smaller entities, the smaller community banks or microfinance institutions that are in the rural areas, 
to be able to digitize them through the SaaS model on a multi-tenancy approach where they can come in and pay an affordable price that they can actually start the journey and then get scaled up to as, as, as big as they want, as quickly as they want. So they can grow at their own pace. But the most important thing is people that are stuck in the, in the rural areas have now got the opportunity through what you mentioned in the beginning when we started this conversation, the, the mobile side, through mobile, who's done us a great um, service in infrastructure, taking communication to these rural areas, we can now provide SaaS in these rural areas. Because if you've got the networks, you can connect, we can actually start digitizing those people as well at an affordable rate. There is just one thing I want to clarify, or I hope we can clarify, and that's the role of fintechs. At one level, it seems to me fintechs are fragmenting business solutions because a fintech quite often will do just one thing, but do it very well. How does that sit and how does the integration of that sit with banks attempting omnichannel offerings, Nikhil? It's a really good question. And, you know, going back to, you know, it, it connects really beautifully to the SaaS model discussion that we were just having uh, earlier, right? You know, fintechs, as you rightly said, uh, they do one thing, most of the fintechs, they'll do one thing really, really well for a bank to actually go back and create a similar functionality across maybe, you know, 10 or 15 different type of products or service offerings can be extremely time consuming, can be very expensive as well. So I think the way to go forward is the ability for banks to partner with these fintechs. The, the collaboration with fintechs is the way to go forward, where basically banks are able to have the kind of APIs and ability to connect with fintechs, uh, leverage the best that the fintechs have, leverage the best fintechs, get them onto their platform, and then have a, you know, some kind of a sharing model, a revenue sharing model, with the fintechs, go to the market through the fintechs, and that's the way to go forward. And you know, being able to connect through APIs is the most important thing that banks should consider uh, as as you as you think of omni-channel and customer experience. Paul, your thoughts on that, and perhaps some final thoughts on the outlook for omni-channel adoption. Coming back to the whole API discussion, obviously, when you're deploying a SaaS the ease of integrating touch points. Every single country across the continent and across the globe has got its own regulatory requirements, has its own cultural requirements, and has got its own advancements in technology. So looking at those three aspects and being able to adapt to each country specifically on what those requirements are, there are phenomenal uh, fintechs and third-party applications that are developed specifically for those three requirements. And being able to integrate into those people, as Nikhil said, quickly and seamlessly to enhance all the banks and financial institutions' customer experience, which ultimately will allow them to grow. So deploying SaaS, joining SaaS, not only is an economical benefit, but your benefit in scaling is so much better. And then attracting your customers and, of course, as we discussed earlier, everything that, that is now the bank has an access where you walk in and speak to a branch manager is gone. It's now being a bank as an advisor and banks are going to start competing on customer service. And that's where it all comes down to. What are you offering your customers? What are you giving your customers? And how are you continuously enhancing your offering? So it's exciting times. I'm very glad that we play in this space and the growth is phenomenal. Thank you very much, Paul Nilsson, Commercial Director of Codebase Technologies, and Nikhil Gokale, Head of Research at IBS Intelligence.